Welcome to Weld.com. We've been doing a series of like how to's and how to get started and everything. Been bead blasting coupons. I'm sorry, coupons. And what's cool about bead blasting for us and showing this is it kind of shows the the heat, the blue line of how much heat you're soaking in here. And the first one we did was how to do a fillet weld correctly and how to do it wrong, where we blew up the backside too long of an arc, too slow, just way too much heat input, and we just killed the material. Sorry about having to do that, but that's seemingly what a lot of people do. That arc length is critical. So, I, you know, I try to teach my students, they, they ask me, well, how much of an arc length are you trying to maintain? What size filler wire are you using? About the, about the diameter of your filler wire. 330, 16th, 332nd. I rarely use too much of an eighth. You know, when you're walking in a groove or something, you will change your arc length somewhat. It may go out to about an eighth, but certainly no more than an eighth. You start getting porosity, oxidation. You're not directing the arc stream into the parent material. You don't have control. So as far as these videos, you know, we showed a right and a wrong. Uh, I'll go ahead and do that on this one here too, but what we want to do is just a simple lap weld now. And to me, it's like the control gets a little finer. And that's the whole exercise is trying to control what we're doing. So if we put our material together like this, we create a lot of weld area. And then we also have the edges that we can weld on. So there's a lot to do with just two carbon steel coupons are like two inches by six inches and we can get a lot of weld time in there and train ourselves to uh, best practices and get some control. So I want to tack these like in a couple of corners and then I want to flip them over because if I just tacked them on one side and then I started welding on this side, chances are I'd, I'd have this draw up a little bit and then I leave myself with a nasty gap. I don't want that. Again, these are these are thin coupons, or eighth of an inch. So let me, uh, where, oh, I'm gonna run off of an Everlast 200 DV, and I'm running this off of the 110 volt input, which gives me 125 amps output. And uh, we had done a lot of machine features, testing, going through the pulse sequence and everything, which we'll do later on. on some of these exercises, but of all the things that we did with all the Everlast machines, we never really did any 110 volts. So this is why I'm trying to, I want to feature the 110 volt for the output because the output is, is fine for this size weld. So let me grab my safety glasses and my gear and I'll be right back. <clears throat> I'm going to tack these up on the corner. I'm not going to use any filler wire. I have set uh, 125 amps. I'll probably hit this kind of hard just to get this corner to wash down on here and make it fuse and be done with it. A couple of quick tacks that go to just that quick. Wow, those are kind of shiny. They look nice for tacks. Now, you know what? I have never attempted to do this without filler wire. I suppose we could, we could try. There's a couple of things I wanted to do though. Um, I did want to make a bad section on here where we check ourselves where we're too long of an arc, going too slow, too much heat input. I did want to make those so we can kind of see how to mess this up. However, I don't remember doing too many of these because all of these exercises in our coursework is where we are adding filler wire. But let me try to do something real quick and manipulate this without filler wire and see what happens. Somebody want to tell me my amperage? 
camera girl says 78 amps when we came up with this and I was I had the uh, the tungsten up here kind of pointed at this edge and I was making a little bit of a half circle just to bring it down and, and make this pool wash and move forward so it I felt like it was a little less than that but she says 78 I believe her in any event no filler wire and you can see our heat line out here it's kind of transferred out and that makes sense because this piece of material is getting thinner out here on the air the heat is moving that direction it's getting broader um, I felt like I backed off a little bit down here toward the end anyway you know here's here's a weld with no filler wire it's not normal that I would do that I mean it looks okay the profile of it obviously is kind of concave and that's fine you know it's not normal that I'd do something like that because I always add a little just a dab of filler wire now while we're adding filler wire there are a couple of ways I may have to drop I don't know if I can even pull this off but one of the exercises that we do on a little bit thicker like 3 16 material is to make a, a fillet weld in here with filler wire and not get to the top edge okay you know the option here is either to go quicker might be able to pull it off it, you know on this thick of material we're not going to make a weld much bigger than this and we probably want to go ahead and just take it right up to the edge not much bigger than that and flow along okay so let's start that process. I need to change bullets here. Bullets. All right, here we go. Okay, the first part of this weld, I went ahead, added filler wire, and stayed off of melting this top edge. So that demonstrates a little bit of control. The second part of this, I'm going to add a little more filler wire and heat, and I do want to build it up to this edge. But again, I don't want my weld to be much wider than this here. So let's continue on. Ready? And you can tell by the heat trace that we are wider. We're putting more heat into it. I still didn't get right up into that enough. I'm 1 16th. I may be able to get away with this with 3 32nd. I could point my torch in a little bit different angle and roll this up over the edge. But again, we're just trying to make a small fillet weld. We're not trying to blow this thing up. Now, having said blown it up, let's blow it up. I'm going to turn this over. And probably over here on this short, short section here, I want to do something wrong, which my students will do it. I'll do it occasionally. Uh, I want to go too slow with too long of an arc, and I want to pour too much heat into this to see what's going to happen on the back side of this plate here. Even though it's on the table, I expect to kind of rearrange it and melt it.
big old blob of heat really saturated it it didn't it looked like it wanted to yeah it melted a little bit again that's just that's just way too big we don't we don't want that big a well pouring way too much heat into the material going too slow too long of an arc so we want to avoid that I'm going to go in here and do something just a little bit different here and make another run. So this last little bit of run, I, I, I changed my angle just a little bit, a couple of degrees, forced the arc and the pool up into this top edge and added just a little bit more wire. It looked slightly different. It looked way different to me when I was welding it, but I recognize it. It's, you know, you can roll that edge out of there and make your weld contour kind of round. So again, you know, the exercise is all about control and then after doing this whole thing, if we did this 100% consistent, same width, same height all the way around, then the last thing we could do is come in and practice on welding on the edge all the way around and making it look exactly the same all the way around. Ready? So here's an edge weld without filler metal. We could go in and do the same thing with filler metal, build it up a little bit. So there's a lot of good practice. A while back we did a video on how to weld, TIG weld without welding. I don't know if that makes sense to some of you. Those of you that saw the video, uh, we were taking just the torch itself, just the handle of the head. It'd be the same thing as turning this thing off. You got the weight of the cable. And you can practice without even welding. I could take a piece like this and practice all these joints and never make a weld. And then when I turn the machine on, I'll bet you I'm real close to getting this correct on the first guy, on the first try. So if you can hold the same arc length and the same timing and practice going around this whole joint, around this whole part, if you can practice that with some consistency, I'll bet you when you get right underneath the hood and turn the machine on, the gas on, you get going, I bet you hit it real close. It's good practice. Another thing I want to comment on is people expect to do things, they kind of know about them, they've never practiced them, and they expect their results to be like top notch on the first go. Good luck. Myself, I have to practice things. Uh, people have commented, well, I'm taking a test tomorrow and I haven't ever practiced it, can you help me? It's, this kind of gets down to the same thing. It's okay to practice, it's okay to know things, so. Uh, in any event, you know, here's a recap. We took a couple of pieces of, of thin stock, eighth inch material, carbon steel. Uh, we bead blasted them to clean them up. We can see our heat trace by the blue lines around here. We blew one of them up. We made way too big of a, uh, a weld. 
over here it's blue clear out to the end and even on the back side over here we still have gray shaded material over here where we made small welds so there's a there's a lesson you can see the heat trace on the couple of fillet welds that we did correctly and then we came in here and we welded on the edge so a fair amount of welding and some good practice for smaller control on on lap welds so i hope this helps let us know if we can help you in any way bob moffett with weld.com thanks for watching